There are probably a lot of plants you can recognize without a second glance, but what about those you've never even heard of? They start growing like every regular tree, but then they bend at 90 degree angle. There are some fascinating plants out there and most you will want for your garden. What better way to make it bigger, bolder and better than ever? From the plant that only flowers for a few days to the one that's flowers resemble a naked body, here are 15 plants you won't believe actually exist. Number 15. Titan Arum. It's hard to imagine anything more unappealing than the stench of rotting flesh, particularly when the source of that stench is a flower. The Titan Arum blooms for just three days and is the largest unbranched inflorescence plant in the world. Their flowers form into clusters that are arranged on a stem that consists of just one main branch. I'm standing next to a Titan Arum in full bloom. The stem of the Titan Arum can reach over three meters in height. It's quite the imposing sight. The flower is related to the cuckoo pint and calla lily and all consist of groups of flowers wrapped by a leaf that looks like a large petal. One blooms in the New York Botanical Gardens and another in the rainforest biome at the Eden Project in Cornwall. This incredible plant is native to Western Sumatra in Indonesia and is listed as one of the world's biggest flowering plants. It is also the smelliest. On its final journey to death, it releases a pungent odor, one that has visitors holding their noses in disgust. This is why the Titan Arum is also known as the corpse flower. It's quite fitting, really, don't you think? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Naralatha Flower, Naked Woman. Our world is a strange place with many bizarre creations, but none may be quite so odd as the Naralatha flower. Also known as the Leothumbara flower, it is popular because its flowers are said to look like a naked woman. But whether the flower actually exists has been called into question. Upon conducting a search for pictures of the flower, you might find several versions. Some take the appearance of a complete woman from top to toe, while others look like a pear with a feminine face, and another version is very flower-like. The body is white and the limbs and head are purple. This particular flower looks legitimate, and so too does the pear version, but the intricate pale green woman with her hands carefully placed to protect her dignity has many believing the flower is a fake. In Hindi, its name means flower in the shape of a lady. If indeed it does exist, it is rumored to only bloom once every two decades, making it among one of the rarest flowers on the planet. It's also the most talked about over social media. The origin of the flower is shrouded in controversy, with many claiming it can be found in Sri Lanka, Thailand, and the Himalayan region of India. You would think that a flower this unusual would have drawn the attention of scientists across the globe, but this isn't the case. Considered one of the most wonderful and rare flowers in the world, where did the Naralatha come from? Or does it even exist? Number 13. Psychotria Lata, Hot Lips. If you're walking through a rainforest and you catch a glimpse of what appears to be a bush full of puckered red lips, your eyes aren't deceiving you. These beautiful floral arrangements are called Psychotria alata, or simply hot lips. This tropical plant is found in rainforests across Central and South America, including Ecuador, Costa Rica, Panama, and Colombia. It is extremely sensitive and requires a specific climate to grow. 
Described as more of a shrub than a flower, the Psychotria alata is part of the Rubiaceae family. Members of this family are recognized by their unusual leaves rather than their flowers. Yes, the luscious red lips that you see on this plant are actually its leaves. The flowers aren't nearly as memorable as they sit inside the lips, hidden from view. And they're not just any lips, either. These resemble those of Angelina Jolie and Mick Jagger, perfectly puckered and ready to kiss. No wonder they're nicknamed Hot Lips. Just like an attractive woman, these lips have seductive powers. But not to draw interest from a partner, they help the plant to attract pollinators like butterflies and hummingbirds. The plant also has special powers too. Its bark and leaves are great for treating skin rashes, coughs, and earaches. Number 12. Antirinum Magus, Snapdragon. A flower believed to possess supernatural powers has been a popular and common plant in the gardens of many for years. The Antirinum, commonly known as the Snapdragon or Dragonflower, resembles a dragon's head. When squeezed, the dragon looks to open and close its mouth, with just a flaming breath missing. Children find them fascinating, with many pulled apart by their overly eager hands. But fortunately, the surprises continue, because once the flower has died, the seed pod left behind looks like a skull. It's little wonder, then, that ancient cultures believed the flower could offer them protection from deceit, curses, and witchcraft if they were planted in their garden. And that's not the only belief surrounding the Snapdragon. Yet another myth maintains that they are able to restore youthfulness and beauty to any woman who eats them. Now, if you ask me, you'd have to be pretty vain to try this one out for size, wouldn't you say? Just how many heads are required for such a potion hasn't been confirmed. It's surprising, however, that more witches didn't raid gardens to snatch them in the hope of repairing their haggard features. In fact, it makes you wonder whether the rumors about their magical powers are even true. Number 11. Trees in Crooked Forest. 400 pine trees were planted in the village of No Toronto, northwestern Poland, in 1930. This fact alone seems relatively unexciting, but it's the way the pines have grown that makes them so intriguing. Each tree bends sharply to the north, just above the base. Very cool. I've never seen this kind of uh, trees. The trunk travels across for up to three meters and then stands upright again. There's no real explanation for the phenomena, but the trees have gained a lot of interest from visitors and the forest they reside in has been renamed. Theories about how the crooked forest came to be vary greatly, but none have been proven. Some believe that some form of human tool or technique is responsible for the trees growing this way. Others speculate that they may have been deformed on purpose to create naturally curved timber for use in boat building or furniture construction. Both these ideas lack any substance, and so too does the theory that a snowstorm could have bent the trunks. That would have to be some snowstorm. Storm. The real reason these oddly shaped pine trees stand the way they do might remain a mystery, but this just adds further allure to what has become a notable tourist attraction in the region. I guess that's one bonus. Number 10. Dionea Mushipula, Venus Flytrap. When you think about plants and what they eat, you might imagine they're herbivores dining on plants and plants alone. Most of the time, you'd be right. But in the case of the Dionea mushipula, things are a little different. More commonly known as the Venus flytrap, this fascinating looking plant is a meat eater catching its unsuspecting prey in its leaves. 
The plant prefers to dine on insects and arachnids that it attracts using its sweet nectar. As they crawl along the leaves and come into contact with tiny hairs called trigger hairs, the trap prepares to close, snapping shut whilst they're inside. There's plenty of room in the trap, with adult plants typically measuring around 2.5 centimeters in length. Giant varieties can reach up to 5 centimeters. Without a doubt the most famous and fascinating carnivorous plant in the world, the Venus flytrap has a very limited native range, growing only in the coastal bogs of North and South Carolina. Unfortunately, the habitat destruction has proved detrimental to the plant's survival, and it is believed to be extinct in several of its native countries. Number 9. Taliana Major – Flying Duck as soon as you set eyes on this flower, you will easily guess its nickname. The Caliana Major, or Flying Duck Flower, is a one-of-a-kind orchid, native to the Australian wilderness. They are usually spotted in the open forests and woodlands of Queensland, South Australia, Tasmania, and Victoria, New South Wales, and were first described by Robert Brown in 1810. He named the single species orchid in honor of English botanist and explorer George Cayley. The orchid can grow up to 20 inches tall and boasts the unique duck-like flower in shades of purple with red and brown tints. These colors make the resemblance uncanny. It's hard to miss. It typically blooms between September and January and is a cheeky wee devil when it comes to pollination. Insects get caught in the beak of the flying duck orchid and unintentionally release pollen while struggling to break free. How handy is that? Sadly, this orchid is not available to purchase as a household plant as they are included on Australia's vulnerable plant list, on the brink of being endangered. This is mainly due to the destruction of their habitat and subsequent loss of their pollinators. Number 8. Ophrys apifera, bee orchid. Orchids are clearly a fascinating flower, with many different variations, some more obvious than others. The Ophrys apifera is definitely different and looks to play host to an oversized bee within its leaves. More commonly known as the bee orchid, this short and stocky flower has a rosette of leaves at ground level. Two or three of these leaves grow up the stem to form a sheath protecting the flower inside. Petals shaped and colored like the body of a visiting bee are perched within large pink sepals. These sepals look like the bee's wings. It really is impressive, and the deception doesn't stop there. Not only does the flower have the brown and yellow markings of a bee, it is hairy to touch and emits a female bee scent. Its aim is to attract passing male bees in the hope that they will try to mate and thus aid in pollination. In Britain, however, these orchids self-pollinate so the deception isn't really necessary. Often found in open grassland, disused quarries, sand dunes, roadsides, and even waste ground, the bee orchid sometimes behaves like a rampant weed. It is very common in mainland Britain, but numbers have declined in Ireland, where its habitat has been destroyed. As such, the bee orchid is a protected species in Northern Ireland. Number 7. Impatien Citocyna, Parrot Flower. This very rare and beautiful flower can't be found in just any old garden. It is believed to be more commonly found in various countries in Southeast Asia and the tropical forests of Thailand, where it is a protected species. Officially known as the Impatient Citocyna, the flower is gorgeous and resembles a flying cockatoo. As such, it is often referred to as the parrot flower. The flower needs an extremely hot and wet climate to survive, and because export is forbidden, it cannot be enjoyed in a household garden. For those keen on coloring up their garden with this unique bloom, there are seeds for sale on websites. Unfortunately, they are counterfeit and not likely to create quite the same result, but hey, it might be an option worth exploring. Another issue that inhibits the plant's growth is the fact that very little is known about the pollinator. 
alligators. Some say that it's a small bat or bird, others believe that it may be wasps or large bees. And although the flower itself looks beautiful in pictures, don't be deceived. The bush it grows on is not. It is untidy and wide-leafed and can grow as tall as six feet. Not to mention, the flower only blooms for a few weeks around October to November, so it's hardly worth the hassle, really. Once harvested, they are also said to quickly lose their visual appeal. Number 6 Biggest flower in the world, Rafflesia arnoldii. Many flowers across the globe are popular for their beauty and perfume. This bloom offers neither. Not only is it terribly unattractive, it smells awful. Listed as the world's largest bloom, the Rafflesia arnoldii is a rare flower found in the rainforests of Indonesia. It consists of a fiber of tissues inside a vine. You're not likely to trip over it though, as it is huge. It can grow up to three feet wide and can weigh almost 25 pounds, depending on its age. The plant has no roots or stem, but it is parasitic, attaching itself to a host plant to obtain water and nutrients. When it blooms, it emits a repulsive odor, similar to that of rotting meat. It might sound disgusting, but the odor does have a purpose. It helps the Rafflesia arnoldii to attract insects that pollinate it. They obviously aren't all that fussy. The plant was discovered by Sir Stamford Raffles in 1818 when he described it as perhaps the largest and most magnificent flower in the world. He named it after himself and and his companion, surgeon naturalist Dr. James Arnold. This jungle parasite is one of the rarest plants in the world. It's also on the verge of extinction. The Rafflesia arnoldii seeds are difficult to germinate and its parasitic properties means it's at the mercy of its host plant. This is a dangerously cavalier approach to life because without the vine, it's dead. Number five. Methuselah, oldest tree in the world. If you've ever heard the saying, as old as Methuselah, you're about to find out where it came from. Methuselah himself was a biblical patriarch, a figure in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and apparently the grandfather of Noah. Methuselah Grove, a grove of the world's oldest trees. It's believed that he died at the age of 969 and is considered one of the longest living of all figures mentioned in the Bible. For this reason, one of the oldest trees in the world was named the Methuselah tree. Makes sense, right? This tree grows high in the White Mountains of Inyo County in Eastern California and is believed to be 4,851 years old. Until 2013, it was considered the oldest on the planet, but a bristlecone pine in the Inyo National Forest now lays claim to that prize, as it is over 5,000 years old. Both trees' exact locations are a highly guarded secret to ensure their protection. The Methuselah tree was discovered in 1957 after a researcher from the University of Arizona received a tip-off from a California National Park ranger. Edmund Schulman was an expert in the scientific method of dating tree rings to the exact year they were formed. For many years, he had been scouring parks, deserts, and fields for unusual, ancient, or undiscovered trees. So you can imagine how thrilled he was to discover Methuselah's age. The project took several summers, with Schulman returning to the mountainside each year to collect more data, until he found the ancient tree in 1957. Now that's commitment, wouldn't you say? Number 4. Rainbow Eucalyptus Tree Contrary to popular belief, someone hasn't run rampant through this forest with a combination of colored paintbrushes and given these trees an overhaul. No, this is how they look on a normal day and have done so for as long as they've been alive. It'll come as no surprise that these colorful rainbow eucalyptus trees get their name from their vibrant appearance. 
Original, isn't it? Eucalyptus trees the world over are well known for their fragrant leaves and for being the main food source for koalas. But these trees have an extra special trick underneath their bark. Officially named the Eucalyptus deglupta, they are so colorful that they almost look like a colored pencil being sharpened. This happens when they shed their bark. Underneath is a colorful surprise, a spectacle that is unforgettable. As the bark peels away, you get multiple beautiful colors. The tree is the only eucalyptus to live in the rainforest, and one of only four species found outside Australia. They are found in the Philippines, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea, and can soar up to 250 feet in the air. But although its height is impressive, it's the tree's multicolor bark that makes it stand out amongst the crowd. Number 3. Wellwishia mirabilis, Tree Tumbo. What looks like a lump of dead flax is instead one of the most bizarre-looking perennial plants in the world. The Wellwishia mirabilis, or tree tumbo, was presented to the Royal Botanic Gardens, Kew, in 1863, and the gift was met with an unusual response. Regius Keeper said the plant was the most wonderful plant ever brought to the country, but also one of the ugliest. And it's true, this plant is ugly. This is a seedling, and you can see how the two leaves grow out in opposite directions from the central stem. Its large, strap-like leaves grow continuously along the ground. There are only two of them, but they're divided into many segments because of their constant exposure to the wind. This gives the plant the appearance of flax. Many tree tumbo have been examined, with some of the larger plants believed to be over 1,500 years old. So not only are they ugly, they're also strong and can endure the test of time, with their leaves said to be the longest living in the plant kingdom. The woody stem at the base of the plant widens with age to become a concave disc up to a meter across. Small, ramified branch systems grow from here, and these serve only to bear pollen and seed cones. The Wellwishia is common in the Namib Desert, where it enjoys the high temperatures and dry soil conditions. Number 2. Dracula Simeon – Monkey Orchid Brace yourself, the flowers on this plant are the stuff of nightmares. They've been compared to Count Dracula himself, but others suggest the slightly more pleasant option of a monkey face. I'm not convinced. If this is a monkey face, it's a pretty angry one with Dracula-like teeth. This one here is one of my favorites, and very red, kind of a deep red, very fuzzy as well. The Dracula simian, or monkey orchid, certainly isn't the type of plant you would enjoy having in the garden unless it was chosen for Halloween value alone. This unusual orchid is sure to have a captive audience, but it's not the easiest flower to find. They are known to inhabit the southeastern Ecuadorian and Peruvian cloud forests from elevations between 1,000 and 2,000 meters. If you're keen on catching a glimpse of one in its natural habitat, you best prepare yourself for a bit of a hike. Intrepid collectors have made it a little easier for those keen on owning a monkey orchid themselves, with a number of specialty nurseries now offering the plant for sale. They are not recommended for beginner orchid growers, though, and will not thrive or bloom if their conditions are less than ideal. A fussy little character, you'll need to have a serious green thumb to keep it happy. Number 1. Darth Vader Aristolochia salvadorensis. If you're a Star Wars fan, you'll definitely want to have this little gem in your garden. The Aristolochia salvadorensis has a flower that bears a striking resemblance to Darth Vader. As such, it is commonly known as the Darth Vader flower. Photos of these amazing but slightly sinister looking blooms can be found all over the internet. However, most people will never have the opportunity to see this rare plant in its natural environment. The woody climber is native to the humid meadows and soggy flood plains of Brazil. Like many plants that grow in challenging environments, the Darth Vader's appearance is one that has come about due to adaptations. 
These adaptations have been made by the plant itself to ensure its survival. Its helmet-like shape, purple coloration, and powerful aroma of rotting flesh make it seem even more sinister than its namesake. The stench, however, has a purpose, as it helps the plant to attract insect pollinators. Once enticed, they fly through the bloom's luminous eyes, where the unfortunate guests are imprisoned long enough for their pollen to be removed. They are then released. For those wanting to see one, Japan's Kyoto Botanical Garden should be your first stop. Exotic, rare, beautiful, and downright strange, these plants are memorable for all sorts of reasons. If you're looking for something a little different for the garden, these uncommon flower and foliage plants could definitely add an element of intrigue. Some could be a little hard to locate, others may be next to impossible, but they're worth investigating, don't you think? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!